guys, thanks for the click. Today, I'm gonna to be making this two layer template jig so that it will hold and engrave as many of these wooden key ring blanks as possible. Today's video is gonna be a two part video. The first part is gonna be how I designed this jig in Lightburn. And the second part is how I apply registration marks to this jig so that I can use the print and cut feature in Lightburn. So let's go ahead and get this project started. Let's go. Guys, to start off this project, let's go ahead and get our wooden keychain blank. Let's grab a blank here and I'm gonna measure the diameter of this wooden circle here. Okay, because we're gonna need that measurement. So I have my calipers on, let's make sure to zero them. And then I'm gonna measure the wooden circle here. And I come out to about 1.95 inches. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a pad and let's write down that number so we don't forget. 1.95 inches and let's put that aside. Okay, now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna get a piece of paper, a light piece of paper, cause I want something that provides as much contrast to our wooden blank cause it works great in a uh, trace image to uh, get a better uh, image trace. Okay, so let's go ahead and lay that flat on the table and let's get our wooden key ring blank right there and let's go ahead and stretch it out as much as possible and as straight as possible. And we're gonna go ahead and take a top down picture of it using the iPhone, okay? So that looks good about right there. So let's go ahead and grab our camera and let's go top down. Let's get this light out of the way. And all you want in the picture is the light background and the key ring on top, okay? So let's take that picture. The picture's taken. So let's go to the computer and let's go ahead and start the design, okay? Let's go. Okay guys, now that we're in Lightburn, let's go ahead and start our template jig design for the wooden key ring blanks, okay? First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this laser bed with the with the grid lines over to the left because I like working on a white background. It just, it's easier for me not to see those grid lines in my way. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to the left toolbar. I'm gonna click on the ellipse tool button and I'm gonna press and hold the shift button and I'm gonna make a circle. And now that I have the circle made, I wanna resize this circle to be the size of the measurement that I took of the wooden keychain blank. So. Uh, let's come up here to the width and height window and you'll notice that the aspect ratio lock is in the closed position and that's exactly what we want because when it's in the closed position it'll automatically adjust the width to the to the height proportionally so all I have to do now is come up to either one of these fields up here and type in 1.95 inches 1.95 inches press enter and now we have a circle that is 1.95 inches in diameter. Okay, so now the next thing I'm gonna do is we wanna import that picture that we took earlier of the blank and we wanna import it into our light burn design. So come up here to file, go down to import and click import image. Okay, so now that we're here, you wanna go ahead and find the picture that you just took and wherever you put it on your computer, you want to find it. And I can either double click on the icon or I can press the open button. I'm going to go ahead and double click on the icon. So one, now that I double clicked, it imports it into uh, my light burn design here. And you're going to notice right away that it's way bigger than the 1.95 inch um, circle that we made earlier, but we're not going to worry about that because that's easily fixed later. Okay. So now what I want to do is I'm going to make sure that our image is selected. I'm going to hover over it. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go down to image trace and I'm going to click trace image. Okay. Okay. Now that it, trace image has been clicked, it's going to bring up this window here and I'm going to enlarge it so you can see it. And you'll notice that it created a trace with purple all the way around the object. And that's exactly what we want it to do. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click OK. And just make sure before you click OK that you have this delete image after trace button turned on. And that will delete the image that you imported after you click OK. So let's click OK. 
the image has been deleted and now all we have is our trace. You'll notice it's red. Let's go ahead and change it to black because we're not going to be cutting this out. And let's go ahead and rotate it just a hair so that it can be straight up and down as possible. Okay, now that we have this guy, we want to make the diameter of this larger circle of the key ring or the keychain to be 1.95 inches. So let's go ahead and adjust this proportionally in size. So let's select it and let's go up to the width and height window. Make sure your aspect ratio is locked. And for the width, we now want to change it to 1.95 inches. So let's go ahead and do that 1.95 inches. And this is going to adjust it proportionally. So if when I click enter, it has now reduced itself to the diameter that is 1.95 inches. And to give that a quick test, let's go ahead and select the circle that's 1.95 inches and let's move it over. Once you get close, we're gonna move it. So using your arrow keys, if you move your arrow keys left and right, up and down, you'll notice you don't have very much control over it. But if you want some really good micro control of your movements, press and hold the shift button, press and hold the control button. And now when you press on your directional arrow keys, you now have a lot more control over the movement of your circle. So let's go ahead and move it right about there. So that's perfect guys. We got the, the image trace to be the same size as our 1.95 inch circle. Okay, so now that we got that done, we're ready to make our next shape, okay? So let's go ahead and click the rectangle button over here on the left toolbar. Let's click it. And we're gonna go ahead and make an, out, uh, an outline of this leather strap. So this doesn't have to be precise. Uh, the only thing that had to be precise was this circle. So let's go ahead and make a rectangle around the leather strap. Okay, so we have it right there. Let's click here and now let's just move the left and right side of the rectangle closer to the strap okay doesn't have to be perfect get it about right there and let's go ahead and change the color to red okay so now that we have that done we have our two shapes now the next shape we have to make is a circle that's going to go around this metal key ring up here so let's click the circle tool and press and hold the shift button and let's make a circle okay and let's go ahead and put that over here and this can be a little bit bigger than it needs to be so let's go ahead and adjust it and let's go ahead and move it that's a little too tight right there I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger so that we can have freer placement of that metal key ring Let's make it just a tad bigger right about there and let's move it okay guys that's it we have our three shapes that's that's going to cut out our template for the uh, blank so now let's go ahead and select the three shapes let's click the circle let's hold shift hold the shift button let's click the rectangle and having the shift button press i'm going to select the third object which is the bottom circle let's right click let's go to duplicate and let's let's move that over to the left okay and now that it's moved over now that all three objects are selected let's come up to this um, align vertically tool so come up here click on it and let's click the middle one align v center and this is going to align everything vertical so you'll see some slight movement when i click it ready click and it moved just a little bit. So these three objects now are perfectly aligned and that's exactly what we want. So next thing we're gonna do is we need to cut out some of these lines. So um, let's come over to the cutaway tool or the scissor tool, let's click on it. And now when I hover over a line, it's gonna, let's go ahead and zoom in a bit so you can see it. When I hover over a line, it's gonna bold it and make it a darker red. And anytime that happens, if you click the left button on the mouse like this, click, it now deletes that line. So let's continue to do that and get rid of all the lines that we don't want. Click, click, and click. 
Okay guys, so now that we have this done, we have the shape of our, our template. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this and I'm gonna send it to the laser and we're gonna cut it out first and do a test fit just to make sure that it fits, okay? I'm off to the laser, be back in a second. Okay guys, here's the test cut. So let's go ahead and see how the blank fits in this test cut. So I'm gonna place it in there and right away you notice that it is looking pretty good. This bottom piece isn't moving much at all. However, the only thing I don't like about this is that this leather band here is causing this part of the wooden blank to not be flush with the tabletop. It is coming up in an upward direction. And I don't really like that too much because I'm afraid that uh, this piece might uh, come in contact with the autofocus pin. So uh, we're gonna have to correct that. So I'm gonna have to make this jig a two level jig. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a bottom part that has a hole a rectangular hole that lines up with this piece that is going to be lined up about here so that this leather band can fall into that hole which will make this uh, wooden disc lie flat and flush okay so let's go back to light burn and add that second um, rectangle so that the leather band can fall into it and everything will be nice flat and flush okay let's go Okay guys, now that we're back in Lightburn, let's go ahead and insert that rectangle that I was talking about earlier so that the band can fall into the hole. Uh, we're gonna come over here to this design over here. I'm gonna click the Create Rectangle button over here on the left toolbar, and I'm gonna make a rectangle that's a little bit larger than the original rectangle that we made, okay? That should do it right about there, okay? So now that we have this rectangle, let's go ahead and Move it over to the left, right about there. And we're gonna go ahead and select these two shapes. And we are going to do a vertical alignment of them. So let's click on Align V Center. And now these two shapes are aligned. So now we're ready to make our jig and you'll see where I'm going from here. So let's go to the next step, okay? And just like I did before, I'm going to go ahead and cut out a test piece first to ensure that this layer fits correctly with the top layer. So now I'm just going to remove the key ring shape and I'm going to leave the rectangle. And when this piece is cut, it should line up perfectly with the top layer. So let me go ahead and send this job to the laser, then I'll return to the workbench. Let's go. Okay, let's see how these two jigs fit together. I'm gonna to place the top layer on top of the bottom layer. And when I square them together, the two shapes align perfectly, just like they did in Lightburn. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get our blank. And let's place the blank in there. And wow, it makes a huge difference. This piece now is lying flat and flush. And I like that a lot better. The band now is lower, so I have no fear of it um, hitting the um, autofocus pin. Okay, we'll take a look at the cross section and you can see now how this is totally flat and flush. So I like that. So let's go ahead and go back into Lightburn and finish designing this jig. Okay, let's go. Okay, now it's time for me to place this shape into the bigger piece that's gonna hold all the blanks. I already have two pieces of MDF that are 18 by 10 inches that I'm gonna use for this jig. So I'm gonna make a rectangle that's the same size, 18 by 10 inches. So now that the rectangle is made, I don't want it to be red. I wanna change it to the light blue T2 tool layer because this rectangle will be used for alignment only. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, we don't need this guy anymore. So let's go ahead and move it out of the way and we'll come back over here. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and group these two objects together. So I'm gonna go ahead and group them and I'm gonna drag this guy down to the bottom right corner right about there. 
So now I want to copy and paste as many of these shapes into this 18 by 10 inch template jig. And to do this easily, I will use the Create Grid Array tool. This tool will quickly allow me to copy my shape or object into spaced columns and rows. This tool provides a lot of options, but I'm just interested in the spacing size and the number of rows and columns. So let's get started with this. So now I'm going to click on the Create Grid Array tool on the left toolbar, and it's going to bring up this window right here. And now I want to start copying this shape into a vertical column. So I'll look at the vertical side of this window. It's on the right side. And I'll look for the Y spacing fill. This value will set your spacing size. It's currently set for 0.24 inches, which is okay for me. But if you want more or less spacing, enter in that number here. So to start stacking this shape vertically, I simply go up to the Y row column and I click the up arrow. When clicked, it will paste the selected shape 0.24 inches from the original shape. And when I click it again, it's going to paste a third shape. But this third shape is way too high to fit vertically on my jig. So I'll go ahead and click the down arrow to delete it. I'm only going to be able to get too high on this template jig. So now I'm going to move over to the left side of this grid array window. This is the horizontal section. This side is going to allow me to copy the shapes in the horizontal or X direction. So just like before, the horizontal spacing between shapes is set for 0.24 inches, which is good with me. And if I move up to the up arrow in the X column field and click it, it's going to paste the shapes in the horizontal direction. So let me go ahead and click and paste these shapes across the jig. And I'm only going to be able to fit eight across and two high, which will give me a total of 16 shapes that's going to fit on this jig. So now I'll click the OK button and Lightburn will automatically, by default, group all of these 16 shapes together. So next, I want to go ahead and select everything, move up to the top toolbar and click on the Center Align Everything button. And now we're ready to go to the next step. In this next step, I will start to create registration marks so that I can use the print and cut feature in Lightburn to align our design to our jig on the laser bed. So thanks for watching part one. See you in part two.